Well, hey guys, and let's talk skincare during chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a really broad category. There are so many different chemotherapeutic agents used to treat different types of cancer. And it's not uncommon to have changes in your skin with chemotherapy and different types of chemotherapy can lead to unique skin problems. Now in this video, I'm just going to give you some general tips, recommendations, things to keep in mind and proactive things that you can do that can help prevent certain adverse skin effects from chemotherapy. Everyone's journey with chemotherapy is different. Some people develop skin problems, other people maybe not so much. Importantly, if you do develop any sort of skin problem, no matter how insignificant it may seem to you, let your healthcare provider know. Whether that be a changing mole, a rash that appeared, it's really important. Overall, one of the most common skin changes that people experience is dry skin. Chemotherapy can impact the integrity of your skin's moisture barrier, so water escapes more readily. You have an increase in what's called transepidermal water loss, and as a result, irritating stuff gets in. Also, infectious things can get in. Staying on top of your dry skin can not only help you feel better because dry skin gets itchy, not only can it help you feel better, but it can potentially cut down on the risk of serious skin infections. Don't wait until you develop dry skin to start the habits I'm going to recommend. And these are habits that probably sound familiar to you if you watch any of my videos on dry skin or tips for winter skincare or eczema care. They apply here too. That is one of my most unpopular recommendations to avoid long, hot showers. They make the dry skin issue even more of a problem when you're going through chemotherapy. That is the last thing that your skin can really tolerate. Stick to gentle body washes for bathing purposes, gentle cleansers for washing your face. You don't wanna use harsh cleansers. Whatever cleanser you have been using, whatever body wash you have been using, you may not tolerate it while you're going through chemotherapy. If you are used to using a salicylic acid face wash, a benzoyl peroxide wash, these may just be way too irritating for you. Along the lines of that, when it comes to bathing, you may wanna back down on the not only the amount of body wash that you use, but also be more strategic with the locations that you use it in. You really only need to be using body wash to the skin folds, like under the arms, under the breasts, in between the thighs, and of course, to any visibly soiled area. But as you go through chemotherapy, there's really no need to be aggressively soaping your body up with a ton of body wash lather. It can definitely worsen the dry skin issue for you and cause a greater risk of skin problems for you. And remember, you wanna avoid serious skin problems because that can actually end up putting a pause on your chemotherapy depending on how severe it is. Start moisturizing today. Start using a moisturizer. I suggest a barring fragrance-free moisturizer. I always point out that fragrance is a common allergen, a common irritant. When you're going through chemotherapy, you may find that your skin tolerates fragrances a lot less than, than ever before. That's not always the case, but as a general recommendation, I do advise people who are going through chemotherapy to stick to fragrance-free, mild cleansers, body washes, and moisturizers. But moisturizer is probably your best friend when it comes to products that actually can make a difference for you in your skincare journey while undergoing chemotherapy. Moisturizers help to improve the water content of skin's outermost layer, and that ultimately can help your skin act as a barrier much better, turn over at a more normal rate, and it also can help protect the skin from irritants getting in that would aggravate your skin, as well as infectious stuff. When it comes to moisturizing your skin, I do recommend over Always moisturizing after bathing within at least 15 minutes of getting out of the shower or tub. You may find that you need to reapply moisturizer a lot more frequently as you go through chemotherapy two, three times a day. As you go through chemotherapy, your moisturizing needs may really surprise you. You may not be quite used to moisturizing this extensively. When it comes to applying moisturizer, you wanna make sure that you're applying it to your hands, to your feet, to your arms, to your legs, to your back, which can be challenging to reach. They do sell these lotion applicators for your back. I highly recommend that. The skin on the back can become quite dry, itchy. Itch, of course, can disrupt your sleep, which is the last thing you need when you're going through chemotherapy. When you bathe, don't scrub the skin. You don't wanna be using anything harsh, any aggressive exfoliants. Don't go getting those loofahs, washcloths, and scrubbing, 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 scrubbing. That can agitate your already challenged skin barrier and make the dryness 
even more of a problem and subsequently put you at greater risk for skin rashes. Along those lines, I also suggest using just a regular washcloth to bathe with because a lot of people love those nylon mesh loofahs, but they can harbor bacteria, fungi, and you are a lot more susceptible to infections with those types of things as you go through chemotherapy, especially depending on what other cancer treatments you may be receiving, you may even be more at risk. So I just suggest using a plain washcloth and gently when you bathe. And again, you really only need to be using body wash under the arms and the skin folds. And also you may find that you don't need to bathe every day um, as you go through chemotherapy. You don't need to shower every day if you're not, getting really sweaty, you're mostly resting as you should be, you may find that you just don't really need to shower every day. And if that's the case, then don't because it's not necessary. Now, I already mentioned that a moisturizer with niacinamide or ceramides or a combination of those can be really helpful. Check out my video where I explain the differences between niacinamide and vitamin C. I talk a lot about the skin benefits of niacinamide in that video, the science behind how it helps your barrier. So it's a great option, generally well tolerated. A lot of patients undergoing chemotherapy, not only do they develop dry skin, but the dry skin becomes like really flaky. Moisturizers with three to 10% urea can be beneficial for hydrating the skin and reducing the flakiness. However, if your skin does become inflamed, red, irritated, tender, um, you may want to back off of urea. It can sting, it can burn, and it may be too irritating. But if you just have really dry skin that's super flaky, I suggest a moisturizer with urea in it. Or you could look for the ingredient hydroxyethyl urea, same thing. That's what you will often encounter in moisturizers. I really suggest opting for very thick moisturizing formulas. Uh, you may find that your skin really needs that. Something marketed as a barrier cream or as a skin protectant is a great option. A while ago, I did a video all about how to use a barrier cream on the face, so you might wanna check that one out, but it certainly would be something to consider here. And a lot of times your healthcare provider, your providing healthcare team may suggest to use a barrier cream on the face if you develop certain types of rashes on the face related to your chemotherapy. Now, one thing you wanna be mindful of is when your skin becomes dry, you may be itchy, or you may be itchy without dry skin. And so it becomes this scenario where you wanna put some measures into place to minimize itch so that you don't scratch. I've said this before, but it always bears repeat mentioning. If somebody is itchy, telling them not to scratch is useless, useless advice because scratching is second nature. It's very hard to control scratching behaviors once you become itchy. It's better and more effective more logical to address the itch so that you don't scratch. The reason scratching is problematic is because it actually worsens the itch for you in the long run. It sensitizes the little nerves to be hyper irritable, continue to make you itchy. And also it's a problem because you can introduce bacteria into the skin and cause skin infections like impetigo, which you want to avoid. So if you do feel very itchy, of course, make sure you're doing these things that I've recommended up until this point with regards to your bathing and using moisturizer so that you're not worsening the dry skin that would ultimately worsen the itch. Also, make sure that you let your doctors know that you are feeling itchy. There are a lot of really effective medications that specifically address the itch of chemotherapy. Um, so that can be very helpful. Um, if you weren't aware, the pathways that lead to itch overlap with the pathways that lead to pain. So there are really unique medications that are oftentimes meant for pain, but can end up treating itch. Also, there are medications that can help with the nausea and help with the itch. So make sure you tell your doctors right away that you're getting really itchy. Um, moisturizers that have the ingredient promoxine can be really effective for soothing the itch. Also, there are moisturizers with menthol. It has a cooling effect that kind of distracts the itch signals. Another tip though, when it comes to silencing itch is put your moisturizer in the refrigerator, apply it on the skin chilled. Also utilize a cool compress. It can help alleviate those itch signals. 
Something else that can help not only with the itch, but also the dry skin is to consider running a humidifier in the bedroom at night to help keep the skin moisturized. Also don't ignore petroleum jelly. It can be a really effective provided you don't mind the greasy texture of it. It's great on the lips. It's great around the eyelids. Um, yeah, you can use it all over if you want. Plain petroleum jelly is quite effective, but some people find that it, when they're itchy, plain petroleum jelly makes them feel a little bit itchier because it does slow down evaporation of sweat and that trapping of sweat on the skin can actually make itch feel a little worse. And the next thing I wanna talk about is um, there are certain types of chemotherapy that can cause a rash that looks like acne, but is not acne. It's called an acneiform eruption or folliculitis, happens on the face. This cause of medications are epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitors, and patients develop what looks like acne on the face. As distressing as it is to develop this, you want to develop it because it's a sign that your cancer treatment is working. It's actually a good thing. It does go away after you finish the cancer treatment, and you don't have to worry about it in the future. But when you develop this rash, again, make sure you tell your healthcare provider right away, but also you don't want to try and self-treat it with over-the-counter acne treatments because they can make it much worse. And it's not acne. It differs from acne in that there are no comedones, which are those little plugged up pores. And it also, unlike most acne, it is more so itchy and it can be painful and it can spontaneously bleed. I don't recommend going out and buying an over-the-counter benzoyl peroxide acne treatment. Don't try and use a retinoid without talking to your doctor. It can make it much more irritated and worse for you. If you have this, you know, of course, talk to your healthcare provider, but we do recommend you continue moisturizing because there's gonna be a barrier issue going on with this rash and that using a moisturizer can definitely be helpful. And a moisturizer with niacinamide may also help calm down that inflammation. Okay, then the next thing, and I know I always talk uh, on this topic, like it's, it's the tagline in my video, and that's sunscreen. You have to be protecting your skin from the sun as you go through chemotherapy, no matter what your skin tone is, no matter what time of year it is, because your skin can become very sensitive to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. And also a lot of cancer chemotherapeutics can cause different types of hyperpigmentation. So you wanna be protecting your skin, not only to prevent the rashes that could develop as a result of photosensitivity, but also to prevent worsening exacerbation of any hyperpigmentation. One thing I wanna to emphasize too, when it comes to your sensitivity to sunlight, you're even more sensitive to something called UVA, which is you know part of ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun. Um, but it, it's the type of ultraviolet radiation that penetrates the skin deeply. There's UVB as well, which is what largely burns the skin, but UVA penetrates the skin deeply. Now, one thing people don't realize is that window glasses in the home, they block out the UVB, the rays that mostly burn, but they don't block out UVA. If you're going through cancer treatment, you have to be real careful to make sure you're wearing sunscreen on a regular basis. You actually need to be wearing sunscreen indoors because the UVA that comes through window glass can cause problems for you. Now, that being said, I, I don't tell patients going through chemotherapy that they need to stay indoors and avoid the sun, but I give the same sun protection advice I give anyone. Um, make sure that you aren't just relying on sunscreen alone. You also wanna be wearing sun protective clothing, long sleeves, hats, protect your eyes with sunglasses. Also protect your lips with an SPF lip balm. I talked about how some cancer chemotherapies can lead to dark spots, but they also can affect your nails in the sun. Sunscreen doesn't really work on your nails, but I'll tell you what can is an opaque nail polish. Protect your lips, wear a broad spectrum SPF lip balm, and then you wanna avoid being outdoors in, in direct sunlight during midday hours especially. That's when the UV rays are most intense. If you live somewhere where it's cold, it snows a lot, there's still UV and you've gotta be careful because the UV rays, they can reflect up off the snow. And you know when you're going through chemotherapy, you're just a lot more sensitive. Again, no matter your skin type. The other thing about chemotherapy is that it can affect your immune system. And because of that, you're not, your body's not as able to repair the sun damage. So that's all the more reason. Not only can you develop rashes from the sun, but you don't heal from the sun as efficiently. And then as far as the hyperpigmentation, not only do you wanna be protecting your skin from the sun, but another thing that can aggravate hyperpigmentation is heat. 
Um, so you want to make sure that you are keeping the skin cool. You want to make sure that you try and minimize heat exposure. For example, those hand dryers, you want to make sure you are careful with those. Maybe just use a paper towel. I caution against uh, hot tubs while you're going through chemotherapy for a few reasons. You're, again, your immune system is down, more likely to develop little skin infections from a hot tub, and then the heat and the humidity can aggravate the skin and can potentially aggravate any hyperpigmentation. Now, this is about skin, but I wanna mention the nails because it's not uncommon for chemotherapy to impact your fingernails. There's something called onycholysis, basically, shedding of your nails definitely can happen. You can also just develop brittle nails, usually within about one to two months of starting chemotherapy. You can also get swelling and pus bumps, infections, in the skin around the nail. You can also get uh, pigment, uh, dark marks in the nails can also happen with certain types of chemotherapy. Already talked about painting your nails with an opaque nail polish to protect from the sun but I suggest being really gentle with your nails. Keep the nails trimmed short because this will help. We have a long nail, um, it ends up catching on things and the skin around the nails while you're on chemotherapy, it's, it, it doesn't handle that well. So it's a good idea to keep the nails trimmed short. Also cuts down on you inadvertently scratching yourself, introducing bacteria into your skin. If you're a nail biter, check out my video on how to stop biting your nails because nail biting can set you up for problems as you go through chemotherapy with little infections around the nails. So check that video out. I will link it down below in the description box. I give a lot of tips. It can be a hard habit to break, especially, you know, going through cancer treatment is stressful. So you may, you know, be wanting to bite all the more. Um, I suggest avoiding getting manicures because you're at a greater risk for infections around the nails. Don't let anybody clip your cuticles, trim them back, push them back. Um, your skin around the nails can't handle that and the nails are very vulnerable. You can easily get a nail infection doing that. Okay, there's something called hand foot syndrome and there's actually a couple of different, two different types of what's called hand foot syndrome. Basically you can develop a rash on your hands and your feet with certain types of chemotherapy. So one is um, inflammatory hand foot syndrome. Basically you develop redness, you can have flaky, scaly stuff, and kind of numbness, tingling, even pain, diffusely on both hands and both, you know, the soles of both feet. It's gonna be on the palms and the soles. And in some cases, you can even go on to develop blisters. So there's an anti-inflammatory medication called celecoxib that can actually be given to prevent this from happening. So that might be something that might be offered to you by your cancer treatment team. Urea creams, also can help cut down on this. And then there is some research showing benefit with an anti-inflammatory in a gel. It's called diclofenac gel. Applied to the hands can also be beneficial. So the chemotherapies, doxorubicin and taxane, given by infusion. If at the time they're given by infusion, you wear these cooling gloves and cooling socks, that actually can cut down on your risk of developing hand foot syndrome. So that's for those medications specifically. When it comes to the hands and the feet with chemotherapy, not only, again, you wanna be careful of your nails, but be real gentle with your hands. This is not a time to be frequently doing wet work. Like you don't wanna be doing a lot of washing dishes by hand. You don't wanna be just submerging and re-wetting your hands frequently because I mentioned this in my videos on hand eczema, but that really can take a toll on your skin barrier. And in this case, your skin on your hands and feet, so it's just a lot more fragile. So you wanna be really gentle in that regard. Wear gloves, get somebody else to clean your house if you can. Somebody who lives with you, just have them help out more because it really can make a difference for your health um, while you're going through this. Be really gentle with your hands. Protect them from the sun and make sure you're moisturizing your hands a couple of times a day. Uh, the other type of hand foot syndrome is called hyperkeratotic hand foot syndrome. We see it in patients who get treated with a class of medication called multikinase inhibitors. And it's a little different from the other type of hand foot syndrome in that you get, um, you do get pain, it is painful. You can have like the numbness and tingling, but you get cracks in the skin, deep cracks, and you also get these thickened 
scaly plaques, mostly on areas where you put a lot of pressure. So like this part of your hand, the soles of your feet where you stand, where the, the pressure points on the soles of your feet, you develop these thick scaly plaques. Um, and these, like the other type of hand foot syndrome, you can get blisters with these and a lot of peeling. While you're going through chemotherapy, using a 10% urea cream to the hands two to three times a day can help prevent this. But once you develop it, also you may need a urea cream that it has a higher percentage, like 40%. Um, to really help with that. you Again, you want to avoid irritants. And by avoiding irritants, I mean you want to avoid anything that puts a lot of trauma to the skin, whether it be chemical, um, mechanical, or just environmental. Make sure you wear supportive shoes with socks that have good arch support. Wear slippers in the house with socks. You really need to baby the skin on the hands and feet a lot because it's just very fragile. You also wanna avoid going on long walks. That repetitive trauma can really aggravate the skin there. All right guys, I really hope this information in this video was helpful to you all. Let me know in the comments, would you like a part two on skincare during radiation therapy? Cause I didn't touch on this in this video, but there is a lot to know about your skin during radiation therapy that uh, you may wanna learn about. So let me know if you like a video on that. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.